One of the most challenging things when you're trying to find a historic shipwreck is uh, locating it. Traditionally, uh, people have used uh, various mechanism, historic record, but from a remote sensing perspective, the dominant thing they use is trying to detect the metals that are on the site. Most people up till today have been using this as a model of a magnetometer. Talking about detecting metal, there's two basic methods. There's passive, meaning you run a sensor across it and try to detect uh, the metal. And then there's active, where you're actually generating signals and, and monitoring those signals to determine if there's something there. So what happens is when uh, an iron spike like this from a historic shipwreck uh, lands on the ocean floor, it's introduced to the Earth's magnetic field. And as we know, iron is magnetic, but in the case of iron, it takes it a really long time to adapt to the Earth's magnetic field. Centuries it takes it to adapt to the Earth's magnetic field. So when the magnetometer passes over this iron spike, until it's fully adapted, it creates a distortion in the Earth's magnetic field. And that's what the magnetometer detects as it passes by that spike or that cannon or the cannonball or whatever's down there. The magnetometer has to be extremely sensitive. Anything, including the boat motors, solar flares, anything that can cause a variance in the Earth's magnetic field can affect the sensitivity of these devices. These devices have gotten better and better over time. They've gotten more and more sensitive. But in reality, they can only detect things that distort the Earth's magnetic field. One of the things that um, they talk about, well, a magnetometer can only detect uh, iron. It actually detects any distortion, even if there was a cavity below the, uh, the ocean floor or they use magnetometers on land to detect uh, cavities in, in the earth. But m other metals such as lead or silver or copper, they don't create a distortion in the earth's magnetic field. It's not that they're, they don't react to magnetism, they just react in a different way that isn't perceptible by a magnetometer. What they'll say is, you know, a magnetometer can detect the iron, but it could not detect any of the other metals on a, on a site. And that, that's, that's reasonably accurate because the sensitivity of the object, the other things around and everything would keep you from clearly identifying those objects. We built this, this device here, which is a handheld version of, of a magnetometer. What's interesting about technology is things that were totally impossible 20 years ago are now very possible. This is a multi-sensor uh, magnetometer array using uh, military grade magnetometers. It processes all of that in real time as you're using it like a wand over, the, over a site so that we can detect those distortions in, in the magnetic field and pinpoint this object in real time. This is an experiment that we did to say, could we get to the level of a magnetometer being drugged behind a, a boat as a towfish in a handheld unit? And, and the answer is, yeah, we can do that. The farther you get away from this metal object, the weaker the distortion becomes. Some folks will actually take a magnetometer and they will suspend it from a helicopter or suspend it from an aircraft of some sort. And if it's a very large metal object that creates a pretty large distortion, like a cannon or even a bigger, like a metal vessel or something like that, you can see those distortions uh, several hundred feet to thousands of feet above the, the water level. So there is an option of actually flying these along and being able to potentially detect remnants of near historic vessels, meaning that haven't sat there so long that they've completely aligned with the Earth's magnetic field and become virtually invisible. So that's a passive way of detecting metals.